So recently I made a card which had some added texture. I had lots of questions about how I created that. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today, as well as an easy version. Hello and welcome back. It's time for another Take Two with Teresa Altenew and I've got two beautiful cards to share with you today using the Craft Your Life Project Kit. This one's called Silk Art. Now this is a fabulous kit in the fact that everything within the kit is exactly matching. So the stamp set, obviously the dies, the colouring stencil and the 3D embossing folder, the images for the largest floral are exactly the same size so that gives you lots of options and I'm going to be using the 3D embossing folder today to be adding some fun texture to this image. So what I'm doing here is actually choosing an ink color that I think might work for my project. Now the flowers and the leaves are silhouette so I want to stamp them in one color and actually be able to color over top with my pencil. So Previously when I used this image I used the purples and the greens so I used my base color as a pale purple but this time I want to change it up and use a different color and I was thinking maybe I, um, if I stamped it out with a yellow then I can add some pinks or reds over the flower portion of the image but the yellow would also work really well as a base color for the leaves so when you're choosing your stamp color make sure it's going to be something that's going to coordinate with the silhouette image that you're using. Now this is a really large image so I am using my Misty here to stamp it out and I did actually stamp it twice but you don't need to be too particular when you're stamping because we're going to be colouring over most of it with some pencils anyway. The ink will smooth out as it dries and it will also dry a little bit lighter than it stamps. So when I was actually stamping it out, I did do a little test piece as well. I'm going to be using the Woodless Coloring Pencils to color my image today. Now these are such fun to use. What I'm doing here is actually testing my pencil colors over the ink that I've already stamped just to make sure I'm happy with the colors that I'm going to use. I wasn't really sure which pinks or reds um, were going to look the best. so. By having this test piece, I wasn't committing to the whole floral image and I could be sure that I'd be happy with the finished colors of my project. So I had actually stamped my image with the Sunray ink, but I chose to sort of add the reds and pinks over top. And now by having the colored image underneath, it is gonna change up the look of these particular pencil colors, but, it's also going to give me a great base to work on and mean that I'm going to spend less time coloring because that yellow color is already there and I'm really just adding the shading. So this is actually real time coloring right now. It is a slow process, but by having the pre-stamped image, it does actually speed it up just a little bit. I like to kind of come in with the darker color first and add the shaded area and then come in and color over top with my next color. So I used crimson and rubellite. So the rubellite here I'm just mixing with the crimson. I'm not pressing hard on my pencils because I don't want to fill the tooth of the paper because if I actually go a little bit lighter I can add more layers and add more depth if I want to. So you can make this as rich as you like really. You can keep coming in and adding more or you can just keep it really simple. I did outline the silhouette a little bit you might notice with the pencil colors and I am coming back and forth with the colors a little bit and I add like a whole sort of base area of color and then come in with my final shading. That's typically how I would color with pencils over a silhouette. It, it's a really great way to use your silhouette stamps and have a little bit of relaxing time coloring. Today's all about texture and I love the added texture that the pencils give you on top of the other texture we're going to add very soon. So I colored the leaves exactly the same way that I colored the petals of the flower. I just came in, outlined them and then layered up the greens. I actually think I used three different greens and then once I was sort of happy with how they looked and how my flower looked, then I could come in and 
start adding a little bit more shading but like I said you can do as little or as much as you want here so I will list all the colors of pencils that I used at the blog and the link for that will be in the description below I went ahead and colored the second flower with the same pencils but it looks slightly different because I did more of the crimsons so that made it look a little bit darker I've used the coordinating die here to cut the whole image out even though I know I'm not going to use I'm only going to use the portion that I've colored but by cutting the whole image out it's just easier it meant that I only had to fussy cut a small part <laughs> now here's the fun bit we're going to add some texture using the coordinating embossing folder now I is it is quite easy to line up but to make certain that it didn't move I actually did come at come in and add some low tack tape and I did this a couple of times uh, in a couple of different spots over the image and then I could just run it through my big shot machine you can use whatever die cutting machine that you have the sandwich might be different but obviously if you feel like it's being forced then you need to relook at your sandwich for me I just use tab 2 the 3d embossing folder with the cardstock in it and a top plate and I find that works really well and gives a lot of dimension just running it through and there's no pressure as you're running it through and look at that it looks incredible so then I just actually came in and fussy cut around the edges of that image so that I can um just use the section that I want I mean I could have cut the whole thing out by hand but having the coordinating die made it so much easier the trick is also to use the die cut to cut the image out before the embossing purely because if I ran it back through the die cutting machine it would flatten out the embossing and I'd have to do it again so it is easier to do your die cutting before you emboss now the sentiment I've got today is the bold thanks die and I'm only using the thanks portion of it I'm making sure to keep the little piece of the A I'm wanting to use the negative piece of the thanks and I'll keep the letters for another project at a later date I've die cut it out of a piece of the brushed rose metallic cardstock and I'm adding a golden peach embossed sentiment from the modern hello stamp set and this I just am loving the combination of this golden peach embossing powder on the rose gold cardstock it is a stunning combination <laughs> now I'm going to add that directly to the right hand side of my side fold A2 card base and then I can just add the center of the A back in place and I like to do this with the by reinserting the letter into the negative space then I know it's going to be sitting exactly where it needs to then I just came in and popped up my flower with some foam tape on the center of the card it is quite a clean and simple card but I really like the added texture that both the pencils and the 3d embossing folder have given the image as promised I've started on my second card now and this one's going to be real quick and easy now this is the coordinating stencil set for the silk art project kit so that means it's actually the same sized image as we have on the 3d embossing folder just like the stamp was so it gives us so many options but what I thought I'd do here was actually blend out the images first so I'm using the same colors here using both my large brush and my detail blending brush to add a second color and add some shading this took no time at all it was really easy to do one thing to be aware of though is you want to make sure that your image is going to fit within your six inch embossing folder and through your die cutting machine if you've got a larger die cutting machine it wouldn't be such a problem but I've only got a six inch wide um, big shot so I just needed to cut this panel down to fit it within the actual embossing folder so I could run it through my Big Shot. I'm using the same sandwich here so tab 2 the 3D embossing folder with the cardstock in it and one plate on top. Now there was a little bit of creasing that happened on the edge of the card there one trick to help get rid of that is to come in with a and this is a Teflon bone folder which I find 
doesn't leave any sort of shiny highlights on your cardstock. Now I thought I did need a little bit of extra texture here so I came in with some liquid glue and added some brown glitter. You could also use some stickles would work really well here as well. I've got an A2 panel that I've die cut one of the nesting hearts from and I'm going to, I've attached that on top of my cut down piece of cardstock and added that to the front of a side fold A2 card along with the sentiment which is from the bold sentiments set. Thanks so much for joining me here today. I really hope you're inspired to add some texture to your projects. If you enjoyed today's video, please click on the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye.